we are again. We're at the start of the St. Peter's Way from Onga, which is my hometown, good times, to Bradwell on Sea, Essex, for those out of town folk. Um, it's 41 miles, we're going to be doing this over three days, and so started here at Spring Meadow. Guess who's with me again? Hello. It's Alex again. <laughs> And yeah, I have kidnapped him this time. Um, <laughs> that was evil, awkward. Evil man. Okay, here we go, there's a walker coming, so more later on. Mmm, quail. Okay, so here we are at, at Blackmore Church. We've done about five miles. Alex again. He's been navigating for us on the phone. It's working well so far, we haven't actually got too lost and we've made good time. So just walking through the little lich cut here, the man over there, he looks possibly intoxicated. Um, we're going to stop for a quick break, um, <laughs> we're going to stop for a quick break, have a quick bite to eat and then we'll continue on through Blackmore. More to come. Okay, we're in, we're in Blackmore. He's just bibbed, he appreciates our nod to this. And Alex is in the stocks. Okay, we're on the road, still on St. Peter's Way. Uh, navigation's been all right so far. No problems, uh, we're in the middle of the forest at the moment. Uh, there's Alex again. <laughs> um, and uh, we're, we're, Mill Green, we've just sort of passed that. There's a pub up there, but I think it's shut at the moment. I've been there before. And I think probably the next pub on route is going to be the Viper, which is the only pub with that name in the country. Nice little fact. Uh, I've been there a few times, so that's a really nice pub. Um, we're probably going to stop there because probably by the time we get there, that'll be open. Uh, yeah, could really use a drink and a sit down for a little bit. That'll be our lunch stop. And yeah, we've done done about seven miles so far of the of the route weather's been good it rained a little bit and uh, then i got to crack out my new tart poncho which got a laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looked like quasimodo apparently um but i thought it was pretty good it kept the rain off and it, it wasn't too uh didn't get too clammy under it as well which was good so nice cheap 16 quid off of ebay uh Probably not one of the best ones, but it's still fairly decent. And it's more forest. Probably a few few dead prostitutes in there. Um, <laughs> or some dogging. Um, anyway. Back, just hopeful. I'm just hopeful, apparently. Anywho, more to come later on. Stay tuned. Dr. Doolittle, we've come across some horses. Anyone know the theme tune to Black Beauty? We're, uh, we've left the pub, I can't remember where exactly we are. Um, but yeah, and we've just come across these. Very nice. Don't try and chat it up. I think we've met. I think it's your type. Oh, hey! Go on, you've got to do your Gotham impression. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. Okay, I can't actually see now. No. This is under the railway, by the way. And I'm okay because I'm a short ass, but Alex is struggling a bit with the height here. Yeah. Not. Is not there light the at the end of the tunnel? Yes, there is. <laughs> You're clearly more evolved for uh, working in. Oh the shit! Yeah, but I think my hair's just brushed with a load of cobwebs <laughs> as well. Well, this is something the Essex Way didn't have. Yep. A dark St. Peter's Way has it all. <laughs> Even naked ass hikers. That's from Farrah. that was for five minutes, and I'm just going to the loo and having a shower. That's from a Farrah video, by the way. Ha-ha, and we're out. And that, um, up steps. That's what we've just gone through. Oh, and there's one with the river as well there. Here we go. Onwards.
here we are entering stock. Not because we use stoke. Apparently. Um, right, we're going to find a pub. I can see a pub there now. And we're stopping because we need a drink. I just love the peacefulness of the countryside. Yeah, it's a bit busy along here. More to come. Okay, so we've just left the Baker's Arms pub in stock, very nice pub, and we've just walked around the corner and here is a stock windmill, and there's a little sign there, and I'll just read it. Built around 1816 and a fine example of the millwright's craft of that time, restored to working order by Essex County Council. Uh, it's just about opening times. Uh, okay, less information than I thought anyway, but yep, that is Stock Windmill, one of the sights on the walk. Anyway, um, how much further have we got? Uh, well, anywhere. Ideally we'll, about seven miles. We want to do about another seven miles today. How, how many miles have we done today? About 12. We've done about 12 miles today, um, so probably try and get to West Hanningfield or just past that. And we'll see, we'll probably set up camp. More to come. Okay, here we are at West Hanningfield again. Um, it's a little bit sort of council house sort of thing here. Alex is here again. And then down that road there where them cars are, that is towards the, the famous Hanningfield Reservoir. Um, the walk doesn't actually really go past there, so we won't really see it, but we're sort of in the area of the Hanningfields uh, village sign. Always got to get one of those in. Um, we're going to walk to St Peter's Bridge over the A130, and then we're going to uh, try and carry on a little bit, aim for 20 miles tops today, find somewhere to camp. Give us a bit less to do for the next two days. Yeah, relax. And relax, yeah. Okay. Uh, stay tuned. Ah, and there in the distance appears the bridge. bridge in the distance you might just be able to make it out in the middle of the screen that is St Peter's Bridge over the A130 and that was the minimum distance we wanted to make today so we're going to cross over that and then carry on going try and find uh, a good place to camp for the night and it should be 16 and a half miles of the bridge uh, so yeah, we won't go any further than 20 today. Well, here we are again, at the bridge. And uh, that's the A130. Vote leave. I have no opinion on that there. My videos even include politics. I'm going to say, are they telling us to get out of here? because you really want that when you're driving on a dual carriageway to get pissed off by politics. I'd be thinking more about where's the next motorway service station? Although, except we're not actually on a motorway. I think politics but should be left where we should leave the violence, back at home. Lovely. Anyway, let's cross the bridge. And you're coming with us. Join us. Bruce. This is the highlight of the walk. Here we go. Look at that view. Isn't it so Woo, buddy! Yeah, some horses over there, some more horses over there, 
They look pissed. And there we are. Okay, we've uh, just got to East Hanningfield. Seems like a nice village. This is the church. Um, it's closed now because it's just gone half six. And we're looking for a pub just to quickly fill up the water bottles and then we're gonna carry on a little bit on the way and find somewhere to camp very soonish. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. So, we've, uh, we've stopped just outside of Bicknaker. We've done, we've done our 20 miles today. Um, and we've set up, I don't know if you can actually see this because it is, the light here is not too good. Um, it's light here, but on the camera it looks really dark. We're, um, I can just see through there, we're camped in the forest, in the wood. Um, I've got Tarp and Bibby set up. Richard's got his Terra Nova. Did you just call me Richard? Richard, did I? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alex, whoops. Um, we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, th this light, in, just in the middle of the screen, that's, that's Alex. If he's, is it Terra Nova Laser One? Yep. Tent, yep. Yeah. Um, cooked up cheese pasta. There's some chicken as well. Um, I've just gone with some horrible cheese pasta, hot chocolate. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's quite a nice little setup here. Um, we've got, so we're exactly halfway on the walk. Uh, so I reckon we could get a good night's sleep. We're out of the wind. Um, my gas has run out. But luckily I've got my little Esbit, titanium Esbit stove, so I've got only a few cubes, but it should be enough. Plenty of food though. Um, yeah, quite nice views in the forest. It's, it's quiet now, there's a few people here earlier, but they've buggered off. And uh, yeah, should should be good. Um, let you know in the morning. Ta -ta. Morning campers. Um, there's Alex, fresh as a daisy, awake. Um, this is where we camped last night. Uh, it's invisible, invisible shelters because I forgot to film as we were packing up. And uh, but my tarp and bivy was there. Alex's Terra Nova was there. That's all you need to know. We're moving on now from the forest. It's day two. Um, I think the path is, is the path that way? Yeah, I believe so. Oh yeah, my poles have broken. Don't buy Craghopper's poles, they're crap. Um, or at least just look after them better than I did. Um, so it's that way. Is it that way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the way we're gonna go. Although we might take a short detour back that way uh, to Bicknaker. Maybe go and look at the, uh, the Priory ruins. Um, and then carry on. But yeah, we've only got 20 miles left, so we should have a, a, a much easier day today. Um, probably do sort of between 10 and 15 miles. And then that leaves with just a short section to grab well on sea on Monday. Good times. What's this? What film is this from? Silence all around. Yes, even the lambs. Silence of the lambs. <laughs> well, here we are again. We're in the small village of Purley. This is the church, All Saints Purley. There's Alex. He says we've done four and a half miles so far today. Uh, we set off about half eight so we had a little bit of a lay in. Um, had some breakfast yeah and uh, yeah we just passed uh, an older uh, couple of people. They're walking the St Peter's Way for charity for Cancer Research UK. They've got some heavy packs by the looks of it. 
a lot of stuff um, and the dog as well um, and they're just back there it's a bit of a steep section that um, what way is it now that way. right it's that way and oh yeah it hasn't been done yet on this trip it's time to do it what do we think more to come okay so this is the bell in Purley and uh, I've just realized I've been here before with Tommy on a day walk we spent quite a while in that pub and um, Tommy likes a drink not in a bad way he just likes to have a good time um, more to come Okay, so here we are again, uh, we've just left the Whitehalls pub in London, I've just had the best pub lunch ever, uh, and we're heading to the church at Munden Hall now, uh, not too far left to go, we're going to aim for another five miles today at least, probably stop and camp somewhere between Steeple and St Lawrence, there's a, there's a good pub at Steeple apparently, Alex is there. Um, and yeah, so on we go, this way. Okay, we've just uh, arrived at the little wooden church at Munden. It's a grade one listed building. Uh, just to the left of us, left of the screen is Munden Hall. There's a moat that runs around part of it and then also some uh, petrified oaks and dead trees. So I'll be photographing plenty of them. Uh, more to come soon. Okay, so we've just been inside the church. Uh, the lighting probably wasn't too good for filming in there, but it was all right for the camera, for the photos. Quite an amazing church, incredibly old. Um, and yet yeah, nearly, like nearly left to sort of be demolished um, until they you know, started doing repair work on it. And it's isolated from the rest of the village due to the Black Death. They moved away from the marshland out here. Um, yeah, really amazing. Sort of reminds me of Greenstead Church near me in Ongar. Uh, uh, some of it's wooden as well. They reckon there's there's been a place of worship here probably since Anglo-Saxon times because it's of course along the St Peter's Way that we're walking. So it's you know, part of the pilgrimage route. Um, we're heading around that way now and we're going to be seeing the trees the the dead trees the petrified oaks like a sort of a, a forest of just dead trees so that should be pretty cool as well get a few photos of that and then onwards with the path so just follow around here how many miles have we done so far oh uh, uh around about 16 and a half We've done about 16 half. Oh no, sorry, oh. Uh, six and a half. Sorry. We've done six and a half miles today, so that's 26 and a half in total. And there, just you probably can't see. I might just zoom in so the sound will go off a minute. And there, just there, you can see a line of those petrified oaks. That looks pretty eerie. 
Alex said they look like they want to come alive and kill you. Yep. Yeah, they do look pretty weird, but uh, they should make some good photos. Uh, head through there, it's the back of the where they've done a lot of renovation work on it. Um, and uh, just go around the side. But yeah, basically do some more filming in a second when we've uh, when we've got to to the oaks. More in a minute. Okay, here we are again, and this is the uh, the petrified oak forest. It looks really, really eerie. They're just they're just sort of panning the camera along. There's, there's an electrified fence here, so I don't know if there's an entrance into it. Um, scroll back, so I'm just going to zoom in. So, looks a bit like something out of Sleepy Hollow. That's really cool. It's got to be one of the highlights of the walk, that. Looking forward to this. Okay. More in a minute. And here is the moat that goes, I think, partially around Munden Hall the church, which you can see on the side of the screen there. Goes along there. The rest of the farm, like Munden Hall, is just uh, the other side of that. And then, of course, that's where all the trees are. And yeah, that's the moat. Probably one of the coolest things I've actually ever seen on a walk. This just, I always photograph sort of these petrified trees, like you know, you see sort of a random one on its own and that, but to see like a whole field of them, it's just it, it is so weird. Like, I think you could just say they're just trees, but like when we approach them, I, I just like fuck, just like it's almost a bit breathtaking, really. They just look so creepy so cool And here is the moat again, a much better view. Okay, so over in the distance is Mayland Sea Sailing Club. This is like our first sort of coastal estuary sort of views of the whole walk. Very nice. This is a closer look at Mayland Sea Sailing Club.
Well, here we are again. We're in Steeple. And uh, we're just approaching the church and the pub soon as well. There's a lot of traffic on this road. Um, we just had a short stretch of road walking, a little bit treacherous. Um, but before that, really nice views out on the river estuary, some of the best on the whole walk. It's been brilliant, the weather's been good and we've made good progress. We've now done 11 miles. Yeah, we've done 11 miles. Alex is tracking the, uh, the miles on the, the GPS on the phone. It's really useful. Um, yeah, it's a nice cool breeze as well, which is good, but looking forward to getting to the pub here. We're going to fill up with, uh, we're going to fill up all the water bottles here, and then we'll have enough uh, for tonight when we stop for camp. We're probably not going to go much further. It's five o'clock, uh, so realistically probably no more than two hours more walking really we've, we've we've achieved our minimal target of mileage today so that's brilliant we're gonna have hardly anything left to do tomorrow which is good it'll make it a lot easier uh, that we'll be able to get home early here's the church and uh, more in a minute we're still in steeple and uh, we've just come to the first of apparently two pubs in the village and this one just so happens to have a campsite as well so it's very tempting to possibly camp here for the night however we're going to have a drink have a look and see if it's any good if not we'll just head to the other pub and then carry on going okay good times okay so we've walked a little further up the road in steeple and we found the star inn that uh, the other pub, I, I won't mention the name of it again, but uh, we didn't think of staying in the campsite there. It's a bit pikey-ish. A lot of gypsies in there. A um, little bit rough. It wasn't the nicest place. Um, so we're going to see uh, what it's like in here. It does say ensuite accommodation. Oh, car. It does say ensuite accommodation. Touring caravans. Um, but I mean, we're probably just going to get some water from here have a drink and then head off and find some of the camp. Much better idea. Okay, so we're uh, we're not too far outside of Tillingham. We've got about seven and a half miles left of the whole St. Peter's Way to do, which is brilliant. Um, so we're going to tackle that tomorrow. It's about half seven now, I think. Uh, we're just collecting like some wood stuff like that, maybe make a little fire tonight in camp. Um, my bivvy's playing up a bit, it's a bit cheap and it's sort of, a few bits of it are broken already so I'm probably just gonna go with a, like a bivvy bag and bivvy bag set up tonight. Um, Alex is uh, just up there in the middle of the screen collecting more firewood. Um, should be a good night, the weather's really good as you can see. You know, sun's sort of just starting to go down a bit, the road's just down that path in the distance there um, yeah, you can feel the sort of the sea breeze already so we know we're we're close to like the coast and you know the estuary and that and the, on the peninsula and it's getting more and more barren as we go and desolate but it's really nice uh, some really good walking today say so not a lot to do tomorrow so it should make it nice and easy we should probably have it done by oh, midday at the earliest maybe early afternoon um, get to the chapel at St Peter on the Wall, site of the old Roman Fort Athona on uh, the Dengue Peninsula. And then it's a, a short walk back to Bradwell on Sea Village itself to the pub. See if it's open because it's going to be bank holiday, Monday. If not, we're going to get a cab to Southminster train station uh, and then hop on the, well, it's a bus replacement service uh, back, you know, back home. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be really good. In a way, it's sad to sort of leave. It's been a really good walk, this one. Uh, views have been good. Been easy, not that easy going. It's, I've got no blisters, no problems. I mean, since I started wearing these trail trains, I've never had any problems with them. So, you know, pack's ridden well. It's been good. Drunk a hell of a lot of water as well. Uh, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, more to come. Okay, so this is where we've decided to to set up for the night. 
That's my setup there. I'm just using an uh, outkit hunk of bivy bag, uh, down bag, three quarter length self inflating pad, heat sheet, polypro uh, ground tarp underneath. I can't even bother with me main tarp. Um, it's on the floor at the moment. I've been sitting on that while we've been cooking on the fire. We've had a good dinner. Alex is just setting his tent up there. He's not saying hello to the camera at the moment. Hello to the camera. There he is, yeah. Um, he's just setting up a Terranova Laser 1. Uh, mounting equipment. Uh, sleep pad is that? Yeah. Full length, lovely. Bit of luxury. Oh yeah. That's, that's his rucksack there. What rucksack's that? Uh, mountain, Mount attack, attack 40, 40, low alpine. Low alpine. There's a Camelback 3 litre. Uh, uh, bladder yeah. in that. Three litre unbottle. Three litre unbottle apparently. That's our view. Fields. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can make it out now because it's getting darker. Uh, that's as far as the zoom goes but just to the left of that pylon there's uh, could be like offshore wind farm loads of big wind turbines uh, we've got seven miles left uh, yeah, six, and a half. six and a half seven miles left tomorrow so that should be a nice easy day to Bradwell on sea uh, there is a farm over there uh, we've only had a, a small fire then see I've got my down bag there uh, Sea to Summit silk sleeping bag liner and that, just a bivy bag, inflatable pillow, black bag, I've got my shoes and the Osprey Talon 33 rucksack, uh, heat sheet, this is a dirty trekking towel, it's been used for everything, a couple of lights, water bladder, trekking poles, that's, and then that there, that's the pegs and a uh, tarp bag which we're probably not going to use now because poles have sort of broken uh, some of the eyelets on the tarp have come off as well it wasn't particularly expensive it was a cheap tarp so didn't really expect expect much from it uh, it's good as a poncho though so that's one thing <laughs> um, it's pretty near nine o'clock now 9.15 9.15 apparently so we're going to get set up and then probably lounge around in respective shelters and then probably call it a night get up early or something if you want yeah and then oh nice and early. more or less got this set up now so this is the tent I want I can afford it it's Terra Nova Laser 1. It weighs how much? Less than a kilo, notably less, like 800 grams. Maybe not. 800 grams. Give us a quick little look inside. A little bit of the oh, look, 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 house proud. He's like, oh, the cameras are on it. <laughs> Let's have yeah. a look. Very nice. Loads of space, and you, you could fit at least three dead prostitutes in that as well. Depends Definitely. Depends on how you cut them. Depends on how you cut them. Apparently, talking from experience. <laughs> but yeah, very nice. And uh, sitting to eat food. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Well, you'll see us in the morning. Okay, so here we are. We're at Tillingham. Uh, we've just come from that way, uh, there's the signpost there with the St Peter's Way thing on, they're the public toilets, I really need to find a loo and uh, we looked on Google and uh, Alex was like well apparently they're the other side of the estuary, uh, big public toilets and then we walked literally a few footsteps and they turned up that weren't shown, absolutely brilliant. Um, simple things please, simple minds. Yeah, that's the playing fields over there at Tillingham. Then this is the church. By the way, we've got about... 
It's all right. It's all right, mate. We've got about five, five and a half miles left to go. Pub's over that way. Just waiting for Alex at the moment. Um, just got barked at by a load of dogs. Um, uh, yeah, not very far at all. Uh, more to come later. Okay, so now we're entering the church. What did you think of the toilets? Oh, definitely an eight. Yeah, an eight. eight out of ten. For, for public free toilets. Public yeah. free toilets. I thought they were brilliant. Um, I think it was just they came at the right time as well. You know, so that always helps. So yeah, this is Tillingham Church. Yeah, Foxdown Pub is just over there. I think that's the one me and Richard stopped in. And we got lost here that time. And uh, there's the church. Very nice. Um, yeah, we'll head in in a minute. Okay, so this is like the main centre of Tillingham Village. Sign's just over there. Um, and the pub, the pub is just there. So I've been in that pub, it's a nice little pub. <laughs> Me and Richard got lost. Yeah, about five, five and a half miles to go. Okay, so, well, here we are. We've just come out onto the Dengue Peninsula and it seems apart from this farm here, all civilization has disappeared. It's pretty remote out here. The wind's picking up because of course we're by the coast. The coast is that way along that road and then we're gonna head up there, turn left, follow the coast all the way along there and then where I'm pointing there, above my finger there, that is the chapel. You can just see it in the distance. So we haven't got far to go, that is the finish point. It's the first time we've seen it, the whole walk. That's brilliant. Okay, we'll see you at the finish. Okay, so we've just climbed up on top of the headland. There's Alex. And then straight ahead that way um, is the chapel and this is our first sight of like the sea so I'll just I'll just try and zoom in just make out just at the edge of the land there and the chapel is next to those clump of trees there in the distance going to get a bit closer to the sea uh, in a little bit so I'll probably film a bit more then oh and then also oh let's zoom in of Alex there we go and that's the turbines there as well more to come so we've climbed back up onto the sea wall because it was a bit of a bring back there and now we're really really at the coast there where Alex is walking. It's the irrigation river channels and in the distance the chapel again. We haven't got far to go, probably a mile, a mile and a half maybe at a push. Um, and it's about, I think it's about midday now on the third day so yeah we should we should be there before one easily so yeah this time we will we will see you at the end
or you'll see us at the end. <laughs> okay, uh, we're, we're literally probably at the last post there. There's Alex. Um, and yeah, we're sat on this bench, conveniently placed with this nice view. And then literally just around this hedge here is the chapel, I'm hoping. So, I think let's leave the camera running and let's let's video our, our, our the finish line as it were okay yeah let's go, let's go. Ah. so this was what 41 miles yeah, about 40 41 miles oh hang on there's a house here that wasn't expected um can you imagine living here there's some steps um, Shed. It looks a bit abandoned. Um, still through the, oh no, hang on, it's the bird observatory. It's not a house, it's the bird observatory. Lots of bird feeders there. Oh. Uh, okay, it's just this little foresty bit here to go through. And then. Here we are. Woo. We've done it. Woo! Yes. There it is. The chapel of St Peter on the Wall, Bradwell on Sea. The end of St Peter's Way. Yep. Right. Been a long run. Well done, mate. Yeah, good going. Cheers for walking it with us. Nice one. Good. Right. Let's go and have a look inside. There's a few people about today. Uh, Bank holiday Monday. Uh, but it is still pretty desolate around here, it's, it's pretty quiet. Um, see, I've walked this, well I've done a day walk around here with Richard a few years back uh, to here. But it's always good coming back here, I do like this, this chapel, it's, it's a good end to a walk, it's a good thing to have on any walk, it's just an you know, interesting bit of history. Um, so we're going to get a few photos and have a look inside. Okay, so this is uh, the interior of, are you stretching, the interior of, of the chapel. Um, so the area that uh, we're sort of standing on uh, was a defensive fort of Athona. Uh, after the fall of the Roman Empire, the fort became a village that a missionary called said came to in 653 AD.